Hello, everyone. Welcome. Thanks for joining our diagnostic training session today. Now, this is a pre-recorded session this week as I am traveling, but if you do have any questions, if you're joining on Zoom, you can always reply to the confirmation email that you got when you registered for the class. Uh, well, they'll forward those to me and I'll be able to answer those. Um, if you're watching on YouTube, just leave a comment under the video and I'll get to those. And then same thing with Facebook. You can leave a comment on the video and I'll get to them as well as I can. Uh, so my name is Jason Gabrinas. I'm one of Na Snap-On's National Diagnostic Technical Trainers. Been in the training department the last 11 years or so, traveling around North America, helping techs and shop owners get the most out of their diagnostic equipment. Before I did that, it was a couple of years as a diagnostic sales rep with snap on so I had about 30 different franchisees I worked with, as well as the shops that they service in order to help everyone get the most out of their diagnostic needs. Then before that, it was uh, eight years at Subaru, so over time worked in a Subaru shop, and over time, I guess, just became that default diag guy in the shop. So I always ended up with the drivability problems, the intermittent problems, the weird wiring problems that would show up on those cars. And that's really where I cut my diagnostic teeth, was trying to figure out all those weird head scratcher type cars that would come into my bag. And before that, a bunch of other miscellaneous French and jobs. Been a little over 25 years under hood experience for me. So our topic today is functional tests, special functions, and output controls. What's the difference? Because if we think about all of the different functions that we can do on a vehicle with a scan tool now, uh, they're called all sorts of different things. And they all can be lumped into this maybe one category of actual functional tests. But you may have heard them called bidirectional controls. That's one example. Special tests, resets, relearns, coding even, programming even. Uh, when we get down through it, we're going to actually talk through all these different terms. And there are some differences in between them. And then, of course, we also need to understand that manufacturer to manufacturer, there may be some differences as to what they call them and where they put them on the scan tool. Now, I will say at Snap-on, we do our best to try and keep the menus pretty much the same manufacturer to manufacturer. But there are some differences here and there because we try to get that balance between, well, what is it called on the factory tool versus what would we call it if we kind of put it in the same category? So there are some differences there so for example on this 2020 chevy silverado i have here we can see that we have codes and data and functional tests now when you see generic functions that is not really functional tests that is actually going into the generic side of the computer the obd2 generic part uh, so when we're what we're talking about here would fall under that functional test menu there and then if we go in there you can see we have both the functional tests in there uh, which would be like a cylinder deactivation, a compression test, crank variation learn, et cetera. But there's also output controls in there. So under output controls, we will see that is a lot of that, what I would classify a bi-directional control. So this is turning things on and off. For example, AC compressor, pre compressor clutch relay. I'm turning it on, I'm turning it off. Now we can use these tests for both when we're diagnosing the vehicle and see, okay, we're overriding the controller. We're sending a command out to this whatever, in the example of the AC clutch relay, and does the AC clutch turn on or off, or does it not? That way we can kind of decide, well, what side of the equation it is. Is it on the input side of the computer or is it on the output side of the computer? When we're using functional tests, it's going to be an output side of the computer. Uh, and like I said, turning things on and off. So for Ford, we see that we have functional tests listed in there as well. Uh, but in this case, we have two options. We have output controls and we have special functions. So from that menu, it veers off into those two. Uh, so as far as special functions are concerned, that's going to be like EVAP leak, power balance tests, any of our automated tests that would go through there to kind of walk you through step by step automated tests or scripted tests. You might hear that called as well. Um, that's all going to live under the special tests or special functions. And then if we go back and we go to output controls, that's going to be back to those bidirectional controls like we talked about, turning things on and off, turning the fan on high, turning it on low, uh, canister purge valve percentage, you know, these different things where I'm controlling a solenoid or a relay or some sort of output, turning it on and off or turning it open and close, that sort of thing. Then we get to FCA Dodge vehicles. You see, we have a few things. We got memory resets, which would be ways to reset different memory functions on the vehicle. 
functional tests, system tests, and miscellaneous functions all fall under this category as well. So if I go into functional tests, that is going to be, uh, in this case, we have the different injector control states, and oxygen sensor, heater, duty cycles, dual pump relay, etc. If I go into system tests, that's going to be the actual more of those automated tests again. So an injector kill test, set engine RPM, VVT system test, which cylinder is misfiring. So that's my misfire monitor on that particular one. And then we have miscellaneous functions on Dodge as well. So that's ECU information, brake pedal learn, read the VIN, write the odometer, uh, small leak verification test, reset oil change indicator. So those are kind of just some miscellaneous functions, as it said, that don't really fall under those other categories. Go over to the Asian side of things. So we got Toyota Camry here and you'll see we have uh, functional tests, check mode, system tests. So if I go into functional tests, what we consider functional tests on a Toyota, because remember Snap-on works very closely with Toyota on their factory tool. So I think this is one of those instances where we try to make it as close to the factory tool as possible. Uh, but you have uh, like on-offs, you know, your bi-directional controls, fuel cuts, Vacuum pumps on and off, injector, pulse percentage, that sort of thing. Uh, as far as system tests, that's going to be more of your automated tests once again. So EVAP system check, automatic or manual, that's going to go through and actually turn on the vacuum pump and walk you through step-by-step -step checking for EVAP leaks on the vehicle. It's actually forcing the monitor. Then we get to... Uh, say this Camry here again, same Camry, but now I'm in like the blind spot radar. So in there, we're still going to have tests as well, but we call them system tests in this case. So you go into system tests, that's some customization, beam axis adjustments where we have to actually adjust the radar on these vehicles as well, inspection, display, and adjustment for the beam axis. So that once again, it's not just engine, you can do it in pretty many modules when the manufacturer makes it available, it, it has some capabilities on, you know, blind spot monitor, transmission, analog brakes, what have you. Uh, these are available in there. As well. And then if we go to European side of things, we got BMW 3 Series here. And if I go on a functional test, once again, you're going to see we have actuator tests this time listed and then special functions. So actuator tests is going to be what we would call like that bidirectional controls again. Turn the fuel pump on and off. Uh, tank vent solenoid valve and disable injectors that can go through and disable individual injectors that way. Special functions is going to be things like uh, determining the injectors, valvetronic lift adaptations, uh, learning valvetronic limit positions. Some of these are more like a reset or a relearn. Uh, turn the solenoid valve inlet on, on and off of the Vano system, etc. So Depending on what you're looking for, it may be in a different category depending on what you're looking for. So it's always good if you don't find it the first place you look, look into a different place, and it might be there. Now, as we get into the newer vehicles, however, you're going to come across things like secured functions. So you may have heard a lot of talk, especially lately, about secure vehicle gateways and snap-on security so as far as the different manufacturers are concerned, as the time of the recording of this video, uh, the different ones that are out there right now is going to be FCA vehicles, you know, Chrysler, Jeep, Jeep, Dodge vehicles, that sort of thing, owned by Stellantis. Uh, it's pretty much anything 2018 and newer. I'm sure there's some 2018s that don't have it. Uh, but uh, started 2018 and newer, you need gateway access to get to these functional tests. It's not going to really allow you to do anything that sends a command to the when it comes to Ford, that's pretty much 2018 and newer as well. Uh, it's not all functional tests. It's some functional tests, uh, but you will also need the gateway access for that. The nice thing about Ford is that there's no additional cost to that, and it's done in the background. As long as you have updated software and access to the internet on your tool, you should be able to do those functions no problem. Uh, Nissan is coming down the pike in North America. It is available over in the UK right now. Uh, but as far as that, Nissan also uses auto off like FCA does over here in the States. So that will just be an additional checkbox on the auto off. And that's uh, pretty much 2021 in newer vehicles. And that's once again, that, that bucket of some secured function. I can still go in there and do a lot of functionality without having that gateway unlocked on the vehicle. Uh, it's just some of the secured functions. 
And then uh, the more recent one that we just added is VAG, so Volkswagen Audi Group. And that's pretty much I've been able to find 2021 and newer. And that's, once again, some secured functions. And I think in my experience anyways, just going through the menus, uh, it's way fewer secured functions than not. So I'm able to do a lot more on these Volkswagen and Audi groups. There's just some things they want to keep locked down uh, from unauthorized use. So it's it's not all functions. There's not that long a list that we've been able to find so far that it actually needs that personal access code to get in there. Uh, but there are different ways of doing it. There's other videos we have on these sort of secured functions, just, but I just figured I would bring it up and, and tell you that there is a differentiation from brand to brand to brand as to what they allow you to do and what they don't allow you to do with these secured functions. So there are some differences. You may never need it on a Volkswagen if you're only doing simple tests, bi-directional control, or maybe you will. So it just, just kind of depends on a case by case, vehicle by vehicle basis. So let's walk through uh, these different functions as, and let's kind of define what they are. So the first one here is bi-directional control. So what a bi-directional control is going to do is it's going to override control module outputs. So like I said, solenoids, relays, anything the computer controls to turn on and off or opens and closes a pulse with modulated signal, something like that. It's often used for diagnosis. So I want to see, can the computer command this relay on, even if it says it's not working, or my vent valve, is, is it turning on and off, or is it a problem in the circuit, something like that. So we can see whether or not the computer can actually command it, and then that'll allow us to know what part of the circuit it's in. It can also be used for verification after the fact. So if I try to do a bidirectional control to diagnose and it doesn't work, then I do my repair. I put in whatever the new part is or what have you. I can then go and verify that the circuit is working properly by going into the computer and turning it on and off. Some examples include, say, like a vent valve, turn it on and off, or AC clutch, on and off to verify whether or not the clutch is working, or the clutch relay is working in that case. Uh, so in this example, we're on that 2020 Silverado we looked at earlier, and those all reside in this case in the output control section. And then you can see things like the AC compressor clutch relay, for example. I can go in there, and then all I have to do is use these controls up here, turn it on, turn it off. That's all a bi-directional control is. It's really a simple on-off. There isn't, uh, isn't a sort of... A, there's really not a lot of rules you need to follow with this. Like the vehicle doesn't need to be warmed up or running or off or anything like that. Usually the main thing you need to follow is the key is. And oftentimes you can't do bi-directional controls with the vehicle running, depending on what it is. Uh, so just be aware of that. Sometimes it might block you if the vehicle's running and sometimes the vehicle has to be running. So you just want to definitely pay attention to what it says on the screen as to what the parameters are for the test. And that's going to be the theme across all of so that's bi-directional control. Then we get into special tests. So that would be your special functions you may see that on the tool as well. So these may be a manufacturer specific test that we get right from the manufacturer that's it's in the normally in the factory tool or also what we would call a scripted test. So we actually have tests in there that go take it another step further after the factory tool and what it does. Um, so we actually have tests where if it's something that can just step through and I need to set these different waypoints along the way, we can script it out. So, okay, once it, the RPM hits this, it'll advance to the next step. And once the temperature hits this, it'll advance to the next step, that sort of thing. Or maybe there might be input from you saying continue, next, that sort of thing. Examples of this, it might, might have an automated compression test on a vehicle or say a power balance test for diagnosing misfire or something like that. So this is on that Ford, that's under special functions. And then you see we have the power balance test right there. We also have the relative compression test, uh, but we got the power balance test. So that's going to be used to diagnose misfires. You know, you, the weaker cylinders are going to be low. And then uh, normally you're not going to see a cylinder over contributing. It'd more be, be like a line, but uh, this is just a demo example. And then also in this power balance test, I can turn the injectors on and off individually. So I can see, oh, is that injector contributing to the problem or is it something else? So if I see a, you know, a problem with a cylinder, say the cylinder one right here, and then I turn off the cylinder inject, uh, injector one and it gets worse, then I'll know it's not a fuel problem. But if I turn off injector one and it doesn't change at all, the vehicle's running the same, 
then I could suspect that that injector may be the problem in that case. So that'll help an awful lot with diagnosis. And then I can also use that after the fact to verify. Also falling in the bucket of functional tests could be a reset. So a reset is often used to reset a parameter back to factory specs. So for example, oxygen sensor heater circuit, you have to relearn those on GMs, Nissans, uh, or say transmission shift adapters. As you drive the vehicle, it learns how to shift. And then if I do any transmission work, I need to reset that back to a factory state. So in the example here, and actually a lot of these examples, I'm gonna talk from here on out, on some, on many of our tools at this point, really, um, it's going to be anything with fast track intelligent diagnostics as long as your software is current. And then also on the Veris Edge, we have this quick menu for service resets and relearns. Now, that's not to say that the functional tests aren't in the individual modules, but this makes it a little easier for you finding them. So I don't have to go in. Is it an output control? Is it a system test? What kind of test is it? It's categorized by job. So if I go into that service resets and relearns, you'll see it lists them by module and then by job. So for example, if I needed to replace or relearn the oxygen sensor, it's listed there under a job. I can go in there and then I can pull up my resets and calibrations. Now there has been some modifications to this. We've added in, you can actually do the functional test, the bi-directional controls that are related to it may show up on this menu as well. But in this case, we have just the reset so if I go into auction sensor heater learn, we'll just hit continue. And then it's going to give you data based on what's going on with the vehicle right now. And then all you got to do to change it is just hit reset. Resets this resets itself, goes into another screen, says it's done, and then it's done. Relearns can often be confused with resets, but it might be a little bit different. It's actually a little bit different than how we would define it. So relearns are used to teach the ECM the parameters of a replacement part. So for example, I replace a throttle body on a vehicle. I need to do a throttle body relearn because the vehicle needs to know where's full, full open, where's full closed, because it might be a little bit different from throttle body to throttle body. It might have slightly different manufacturing tolerances, things like that. So the vehicle needs to learn, okay, when I, when I say I want to go to 100%, where is that? In, in in space right uh, or a valve body relearn i do some solenoids or i do uh, some work on the valve body or on the transmission i might have to relearn the solenoid tpms is another uh, example of that i rotate the tires i need to teach the vehicle what corner that tire is on when i do it even just a simple tire rotation so that would be considered a functional test as well it's just a relearn so if i go into service resets and relearns again in this example we're on a 2012 murano and that needs an idle learn after I do the throttle bar. So I can go in there and there's an idle air volume learn right there. I can pop in there. And it's going to be a function to learn the idle air volume that keeps the engine idle speed within a specified range. Must be performed under any of the following conditions. Each time the IAC valve is uh, throttle body or ECM is replaced, idle speed or ignition timing is outside of specifications. This needs to be done as well. So I hit continue. And then here is... Another point that I need to make during the throughout this whole presentation for any of these tests, if there are things on the screen like this, make sure you follow these instructions to the letter because these instructions will help you make the test work. If you skip a step, if you don't do exactly what it says on the screen, the test might fail and then you'll wonder why. You know, it has to be on for a key. This is a key on, key off cycle, right? So on at least two seconds, off at least 10 seconds, on at least two seconds, off at least 10 seconds, right? So it's going to tell you you need to do these different types of things. Uh, it could be, you know, it needs to be above a certain coolant temperature. It needs to be idling for a certain amount of time. I may need to hold the accelerator pedal at 100% or whatever it happens to be. Make sure you follow the parameters that are on the screen. So in this case, throttle valve closed position learning, and then it says cycle the key a couple times and then confirm that the throttle valve opens during the 10 seconds that it's off. Going to depend on the vehicle, of course, but, and then here we go before performing that, make sure all the following conditions are satisfied. Learning will be canceled if any of the following conditions are missed for even a moment. Battery voltage needs to be more than 12.9 volts at idle. 
Engine coolant temperature needs to be between 70 and 100 Celsius, 158 to 212 Fahrenheit. Needs to be in park and neutral, et cetera, et cetera. I'm not going to read through this whole list, but all of this needs to be satisfied. Otherwise, it's not going to work. All right, so just be aware of that. Because we get calls in all the time in customer care. It's like, hey, this test is broken. It's not working. And then as, after they walk through it and they go step by step, say, oh, it actually does work. I just missed one of the steps. All right. So if all the conditions are met, it'll go through and it'll say test in progress. And then it'll tell you it's completely installed. Another type of functional test we may be able to find in there is coding. So coding is used, and this would be the direct definition of what we would call coding, because I know there's some confusion out there as to what coding actually is. But coding is used to teach the ECM parameters by using a code number, hence coding. For example, fuel injector coding. I change the fuel injector. I need to tell the computer the flow rate. It's got a code number. I've typed that in. Or proxy alignment. This is popular on FCA vehicles, something that needs to be done, and that's considered a coding function as well. Uh, so in this case, it says body control module stores and compares vehicle configuration data with the instrument cluster as well as other electronic control units. This process is referred to programming or configuration of systems integrated proxy, also known as proxy with an X. If the configuration mismatch is detected, it'll set a code and we need to do a proxy alignment. So in this case, on this vehicle, the Fiat 500, it actually is called out separately on its own as its own little thing under body control. So we got proxy alignment. And then we can perform the procedure or stop. So if we perform the procedure, it's used to display the proxy configuration status of the entire vehicle and copy the configuration to any required ECUs. They continue. It's going to tell you whether or not it's configured. They continue again. It's going to go through there. That's going to tell you what you need to do. Wait for the countdown timer, turn the ignition off, and then it'll tell you whether it's complete. All right. And then the last one's going to be programming. So programming, once again, a lot of confusion over this term in the industry. But what programming actually is, is used to change the ECM parameters based on a set list of parameters. So, for example, if I want to go into my body control module and I want to set it to all the doors unlocked with the key fob press, or I want to have just the driver's door unlocked with one press, or if I want the alarm to chirp back at me, I can go in there. So, for this example, uh, we're in the body control module on a, a 2011 Forester, and you see auto lock time, zero seconds. I can click edit, and it will go in here, and there are my options. So, I can go anywhere from 0, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, or 60 seconds. So let's say we wanted to do for 20 seconds. I'm going to go in there. We're going to hit program. And then it'll come in. It'll display 20 seconds. We would hit program again. And that would program it. Programming it into the module. So now that we've defined kind of the parameters based around this, let's go live on the tool. And let's see a few examples uh, that we could use for as far as bidirectional controls, special functions, things like that. All right, so here's our scan tool, and let's go through a different few different functions that we might have. We'll go into the scanner and look at what we have for functional tests and special functions, et cetera. Uh, so 21 Silverado in this case. And if I wanted to look in you know, just the engine by itself, we can go into functional tests. And then you can see all the different things. So we got like a cylinder deactivation test, which will deactivate individual cylinders. We got a compression test. It's kind of an automated compression test. So it's used to set up the engine to perform the compression test. The fuel pump injectors and spark will be disabled. So the computer automatically does that. And then the throttle will be moved to wide open throttle. So really, you don't have to do anything except hit start. So that's kind of handy. So we'll hit continue. A nice thing about it also is it gives you data as far as what's going on. Engine compression test has been enabled. When ready, select start. The engine will crank for five seconds. It only applies to vehicles with keyless ignition. Okay, so we'll hit continue. And then it'll do, it'll do the test. It'll crank the vehicle over, and then it'll give you results. So when it's done, it says select repeat to continue or exit to end it. So you could watch the data, see what it does, listen to the engine, see what it does, and uh, just kind of go from there. It automatically does that for you, which I think is pretty pretty helpful. Uh, crank variation learn. You need to do that after you do any engine work. You just kind of rev the engine up a bunch of times, and it, and it learns uh, you know, where the crank sensor is and what the uh, variations are with that uh, automated injector balance cylinder power balance throttle sweep uh, output controls so if i uh, 
notice how it is kind of its own thing in, in those menus. So if I wanted to turn the AC compressor clutch relay on and off, I can just go in there, hit continue, turn it on, turn it off, and then I can see, you know, what the command is and what happens there. Um, say, you know, fuel trim reset. All right, so I might have to go in there and actually reset the fuel trim back to, you know, if I got a way out of whack fuel trim and I want to figure out what's going on right now with the vehicle, I can just hit reset and it'll reset it back to where it's supposed to be. And then it'll slowly work its way wherever it needs to go. And I can see, is it actually still rich, lean, that sort of thing. Um, so that's my on-off things. That's my resets are available in there. Uh, oxygen sensor heaters, right? So that's going to be, uh, engine needs to be running, it said, but then it'll give me a percentage, right? Pulse with modulated percentage as to turning it on and turning it off. And then I can see how it reacts. Based on the data, I could also be using a scope at the same time to see how that reacts. Uh, how about like EVAP vent solenoid, right? So the vent solenoid is way in the back of the truck, kind of near the rear axle. Uh, so I could have it up in the air. On a Zeus, I can be wirelessly connected to the OVD2 port. And then I can have the scope hooked up underneath the truck to the vent solenoid valve. And then I can see how it's going. I can set it to venting and not venting and see back and forth does my voltage change on and off, whether or not the computer can control it and whether or not the voltage is actually making it all the way to the sauna. So those are some pretty helpful output controls. Another one on Chevy that's interesting is the brake pedal position sensor. So on these, it's not a brake light switch anymore. It's not really, wouldn't call it like a brake switch, but it's a brake pedal position sensor. So it's used for multiple modules to understand where's the brake pedal in space uh, you know, how uh, how hard is it? Are they hitting the pedal, et cetera? When you replace it, though, you need to go into two different modules to, to do the reset, the relearn on that. So you need to go in the engine module and you need to go on the body control module. So if I go into the engine module and I go into functional tests, it's actually under uh, output controls. here, And then you need to find brake pedal position sensor learn. Right. So this is brake pedal position sensor learn. You go in here. And then you hit learn, and then it learns it. You have to make sure the pedal's off. Now, if I just did that, it's only going to work in the engine. It doesn't work in the body control module. So I guess they just go down to the body controls and then find it in there as well. So there's functional tests. There's output controls. Is it under output controls? Yeah, there it is right there. Brake pedal position sensor learn there as well. So apply the parking brake, start the learn procedure. Go in there, hit learn, and it learns it. So in that case, I would be done. Now, how would I know if I even needed to do that? Well, if you have one of the tools with the service resets and relearns, one of the nice things that it does is um, it'll pull that from both. So let's say I need to do the brake pedal position sensor. So that is in here under, uh, where is it? Under brakes, I guess, right? It must be under brakes. So there we go. Uh, bu -bu 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 brake pedal position sensor. There it is. Brake pedal position sensor. So it is under brakes, which makes sense. Uh, functional resets and calibrations. It is going to go through. And there's also a travel sensor learn as well. Body control module brake pedal position sensor learn. Engine brake pedal position sensor learn. And there's also a travel sen uh, brake pedal travel sensor learn. It's a different brake pedal in there. So it's got two sensors. It's got a brake pedal position sensor and a travel sensor. So in this case, though, it does pull in the body control and the engine in one place. So I don't have to go and find it in both of those modules and figure out, oh, is it an output control? Is it a special function? Where is it? From that menu, I can go and do that. All right, so that's our Ford. Let's go, I mean, sorry, that's our Chevy. Let's go into a Nissan. This one's a Nissan Sentra 21. So this would be a secured vehicle, actually. And you will see when we go in here, it's going to give us some security link, right? And since security link's not active at this time on Nissan, uh, it's going to say it's failed to start. But if I hit continue a couple of times, it's going to allow me in. Now, notice how it says some vehicle manufacturer secured diagnostic requests may not be available. It's going to depend on what it is. So, for example, if I go into the engine and I pull this up, I can go into functional tests, maybe special functions. And I want to go into, let's say, idle air volume learn, right? That's a big one on Nissan. Let's go to idle air volume learn. 
needs to be done anytime the valve and throttle body ECM is replaced. I can go in here. Here's a good example of you need all of this, right? I already talked about this in the slides, but you need to make sure all that is correct. Go in there, confirm vehicle test conditions are correct before continuing, and then you hit continue, and it'll walk you through it. And in this case, it says cannot be tested. Try to start from the beginning again because it doesn't meet the parameters. You know, one of the parameters is incorrect because it's just dummy data going through here. Battery voltage is too low. I can tell you that right now. Uh, and the vehicle isn't supposed to be moving, right? So dummy data is going to throw that test off. So I need to make sure that I meet all the parameters. Otherwise, it gives me that error. But notice I was able to go in there, into the vehicle, into the module, and do a functional test on it because it is not one of the functions that is secured on this vehicle. Uh, so the only time you're gonna run into that trouble is if you need to do one of those tests and it says, oh yeah, by the way, that's a secured function, right? So that's just a, an, another one of those examples. All right, let's go to Ford F-150. Now this one also has security link, but you might not necessarily see that as well. So Ford F-Series F-150. And then let's say I wanted to go in and do, oh, let's say change tire size. You can go in there and actually change the tire size, functional resets, tire size and axle ratio. You can go in there. And uh, this technically programmable module installation, I guess. So it's going to verify the VIN. Oh, in this case, that one's not supported by the vehicle. So sometimes the test's not supported by the vehicle either. Um, let's see, how about, what else? How about replace the fuel injector? All right, functional resets there. And then I can go through, and in this case, we don't actually have any, there's no coding yet necessary. There's no resets necessary. There's actual functional bi-directional controls that will list in here as well. So say I wanted to go to injector one, I can go in there and I can make it normal, make it disabled, and I can see how the vehicle reacts to that. Notice once again, did not see that security links function in there. However, if I need to replace an ECM on this, under functional tests, special functions, um, actually this one doesn't have PMI, so never mind. But power balance test, for example, there's another one I can go through. Power balance test, set in park or neutral, excessive RPM or rapid RPM changes may cause data loss. Go in here, and then there's my graph. Then disable an injector, see what it does. Enable all of them. Disable a different injector, see what it does. Enable all of them, etc. So that's able to walk through those different functions. And then lastly, let's go through a Beamer. And we got a 3 Series, 2014 3 Series. Go in there. Um, we'll do the 328i, that one. All right, and then we could go through uh, engine, let's just say. Functional tests, special functions, see a cooling system, ventilation, startup valve chronic, Venos timing chain test. This one's pretty cool because it'll actually tell you whether or not it feels that the timing chain is stretched based on uh, running the vehicle. So an important note for performing the timing chain test, it must operate trouble free. Have the Venos solenoid valves already been checked and can be determined not to be the fault? Yes. Uh, before the test engine must be heated to a temperature of greater than 60 degrees Celsius. So that might not happen, uh, but we're going to try and run the test once again that we need to make sure the parameters work. Timing chain test checks the intake and exhaust. It must only be performed once during a diagnosis procedure, so basically once a P cycle. They continue. We're going to start the engine. Once it hits it, it's going to go and it's going to catalytic converter is going to be heated for about 60 seconds. It's going to give us 60 seconds here. I'm going to let this time out and we're going to see what happens. Okay, so when it's done, it says the Vano system is operating trouble-free. The engine is now shut down automatically. The elongation of the chain is measured with the engine off, and the results are then displayed. So luckily, this is pre-recorded, so I was able to speed that previous section up. Um, but let's see what it does here. Okay, it's switching things on and off. And then there's my values of chain elongation, right? 
Uh, so it tells you what the limits are and then what it actually is. In this case, it's wildly off just because it's it's simulator data, but it tells you how many degrees it's off as far as stretch, whether or not it's elongated. So that's pretty cool that you're able to do that. And that's like one of those factory scripted type tests that we were talking about before. All right, so pretty cool. So that is functional tests, bi-directional controls, special functions, resets, relearns, whatever you want to call them. Anytime we're taking over the computer and doing a special test or overriding a control module, that's what we would consider a functional test. So hopefully we've demystified a little bit of the differences between them all. All right, let's talk about what we're going to talk about next week. Next week is going to be OEM specific training, continuing our OEM specific training courses. And this time it's going to be on BMW. So we went through Ford already, which was our domestic. We went through Toyota, which was our Asian, and now this time it's our BMW. So that's for this block. Uh, BMW is going to be it. So uh, we're going to walk through different, you know, what are the weird idiosyncrasies with them? And I know there's quite a few. Uh, we'll talk through a couple of the exclusive functions that they have and exclusive features of their engines that they have, uh, things of that nature. Things that you might want to know if you've never worked on one before. We also have some tips from a tech uh, with, you know, here's kind of the weird oddball things that we've seen repeatedly. And it was just, here's what the fix is, right? So that real world type of information. So same time and same place as always, six and nine Eastern every Tuesday. Go to snapon.com slash OT in order to register for that for Zoom. If you want to join on Zoom, you will get a certificate if you join on Zoom. Otherwise, if you can't do that or you just want to go, go somewhere else, you can join on YouTube, youtube.com slash snapon diagnostics. That is on the 6 p.m. Eastern class and then it gets recorded there. And then the 9 p.m. Eastern class goes to my Facebook page. It's facebook.com slash snap on Jason all one word. If you want to see any of the other topics in this series, we have 80. This is actually episode 81 right now. Uh, as far as our training, anywhere from ADOS to our OEM specific training series we just started. If you want to go to our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash snap on diagnostics, there is a playlist for live training readily available there. Now, as far as questions, like I said, this is a pre-recorded session this week as I am traveling. But if you do have a question on Zoom, you can uh, email it to the confirmation email. Just reply to that. Uh, if you're watching on YouTube, you can leave a comment. I'll get to those. Or on Facebook, same thing. Just leave a comment under the video and I'll get to those. And I do also want to mention my buddy Keith, who also does free training. Uh, he does it on specific scan tools. So on Wednesdays, I'm going to use Zeus, Zeus Plus. And then on Thursday, it is Apollo and Triton tools. So it's uh, one class per day. So it's 7.30 Eastern, 6.30 Central, 4.30 Pacific. Uh, Snapon.com slash OT, that is Zoom only. It's kind of, uh, it's meant to be, I have my tool sitting in front of me. Keith's going to put his tool up on the screen and we're going to be able to follow along with all the button presses and walk through and get that muscle memory training that helps a lot of people with the hands-on actual training, virtual hands-on training. It works very well. He's been with us for over 30 years. He is a deep well of snap-on diagnostic knowledge. So definitely worth your time. The first hour or so, he spends on scanner functions. Uh, Wi-Fi, make sure that's set up. Talk about secure gateways. Talk about snap-on cloud. Goes through code to completion using fast-track intelligent diagnostics as well. Got to show you the ins and outs of that. And then he takes about a five-minute break after that. And then he goes through the scope and meter functions on the respective tools as well. So like I said, very thorough class, about an hour and a half, hour and 45 minutes, depending. And, uh, you know, definitely walk through that if you want to learn more about your tool or you're interested in one of those tools. And with that, I'd like to thank you for taking a little bit of time out of your day, spending a little bit of time with me. Uh, hopefully you'll join me next week for our OEM specific BMW training. With that, enjoy the rest of your week. Enjoy your weekend. Have a nice night and take care.